Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dominic Sicali, Mafia Roundtable. Today, I'm going to do a topic on one of the businesses I had back in the day, and I happened to get involved by accident. Before that, I'd like to thank our sponsor, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com, click on the link to buy your vodka, excellent vodka. Um, it's really a premier vodka average price. You'll love, if you're a vodka drinker, one of the cleanest vodkas you'll ever taste in your life. Excellent vodka. Also, um, with this story, oh, also please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're moving really fast with subscribers. Thank you. I'm glad, uh, from the comments, everybody's liking the content. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, love the support. It keeps us going, energized to just come out with more and more shows and content. And we'll, we will be coming out with a lot more um, varieties, but that's for the future. So right now, I'll talk about one of the businesses I had in the past. One was an auto repair shop called JR's Collision. And I got involved by accident. There was a guy in my neighborhood who actually lived in the building I grew up in, Hazel Towers. It's on Moffat Avenue in the Bronx. Came up to me and he's like, Dom, I want to open up an auto repair shop. So I looked at him and I said, go ahead, open it. What do I care? No, I'm going to need your support if I open it because there's other guys in the neighborhood. They're going to give me a hard time. I says, well, I don't know anything about the business. Tell me a little bit about and he started going into, he used to have one a long, long time ago with his father back in the day. And he said, he explained it could be extremely lucrative. He told me he found the location um, and he told me basically what we needed to get started. So um, just the numbers he was running by really piqued my curiosity. So I'm like, okay, let me see. I went and looked at the building, liked the setup. And I wound up giving him the money for the building, put down the deposit. So we rented out a building. It was about maybe seven, 8,000 square foot, the building. Um, and then we had to go to um, a car dealership to get the trucks. The trucks we had, you call them chaser trucks. They're basically like Chevy pickup trucks. Um, you cut the back out, put a lift on it, and you have your tow trucks. So I went, I bought, I think, four or five of them. Not bought them, we leased them under the company. Got everything set up. We got the equipment, went and got a spray boot, everything. So now we're up and running within no time. Um, and actually, before we even got had our spray boot installed, we started immediately. We were just using somebody else's shop for them to spray the cars. But um, I let him run it himself full control it was like a no-show gig for me i don't know maybe 75 a hundred thousand dollars was invested i'm not even sure the exact amount it wasn't really it was a lot of money but it wasn't that much uh for the type of establishment that we had but um i let him go maybe about two or three months and i would pop up weekly just to walk around the guys knew something the workers in the shop um, you know, I, I let him do it. I didn't micromanage him at all. And, um, his name was Nicky Mancini. If I didn't say his name, he's, uh, since then he passed away. But, um, while he was in the shop, it was just running itself. And I remember actually one of the first days we opened up the shop. Now you have the chaser trucks out on the street. They have a, um, scanners. So when the, the, there's an accident, first day, um, call out EMS, police, whatever. So as soon as you hear that band, you hear the location, the trucks, they fly. They drive out this way. They're the first on the scene to do the pickup. And it just so happens, I think we're up and running maybe about four or five days. And it's the weekend. I'm home. It's actually a Sunday. I'm laying down. I have a football game on and... All of a sudden, I get a call. Back then, they had the next telephones, so like the walkie-talkies would beep. Um, all of a sudden, mine goes off. It's one of the drivers. Um, it's actually one of my main guys, a guy, Greg Hill. 
calls Dom. Oh, we have a situation. I need you here. So I said, all right, I'm on my way. I get in the car. I go. By this time, Greg calls me on the phone and tells me, you know, they surround in one of your trucks, all the other tow truck guys. So I'll take care of this. I pull up. I had at that time a uh, Mercedes, the big, big Mercedes. It was a two-door coupe. So I pull up, get out, and I basically have pajamas on with uh, flip-flops. What's the problem? You know, you guys can't be uh, operating around here. You know, we have this locked up. I said, okay. Do me a favor. Uh, save yourself a headache, all you guys. We are going to operate around here. Go to whoever you have to go to. Let them know that this is uh, Dominic Sicali's um, business. This is my business. My auto repair shop. Let them know. And if they have a problem, they'll, they'll come see me. But I advise you guys, get away from the truck and nothing better happen to my guys. We're going to be out there. So go right now, call who you have to call and let them know. And with that, they saw, I guess half of them knew who I was, but they all backed up real quick. Okay, all right, we apologize. Um, some of them just looked at me, and but they, they left, no problems. And obviously, I got a few calls afterwards, you know, a few days later, where I went to go see uh, the guys. Actually, one guy was uh, TV's father. He was a Lucchese guy. He was shelved at that time. I think his name was Anthony, if I'm correct. Went, met up with Anthony. I liked the guy, you know, nice guy. I had to sit down with him prior. Um, so he's like, Dom, you should have told us. And I looked at him, man, really? I'm going to tell you guys, like, I'm a, oh, I'm opening up a body shop? I just, and he started laughing. He says, no, you're right. But, you know, the drivers, they have to stick together. I said, no, no, I understand that. Just as long as they were respectful, nobody got disrespectful. So that was a little altercation I had. But that's how clickish that business is, especially in the neighborhoods. If you're not around somebody, um, you're not going to operate. They'll burn your trucks. They'll, they'll destroy your business real quick. And, it's, again, it's extremely lucrative. So maybe after about three months, I'm walking in the shop, and I'm showing Vinny. I'm like, yeah, this, I mean, the shop is loaded. There's maybe about 35, 40 cars in my shop. So it's rocking and rolling. So I'm like, and then he says, well, what type of money does it bring? And I says, I really don't know, but we should be doing well. I'm just letting Nikki run it and I'll wait till six months and then I'll, you know, see what's in the account and then I'll take some money out. But other than that, I'm just letting him do it. You know, it wasn't that much of an investment. So he says, oh, okay. All right, good, good. And I'm walking around. The guys, you know, they're starting to familiarize, but they still don't know it's my shop. They know I have something to do with it. And at that time, there might have been about 20 employees. Um, when I got locked up, we had about 36 employees working in the shop. So it was really a productive place. So Vinny and I, we leave. Maybe about two days later, it's I think a Friday, I come by. And I'm walking through the shop. And I, I ask somebody, where's Nikki? And they told me, we haven't seen Nikki in two days. I'm like, you're kidding me, right? No, he hasn't been around. So right away, I start calling Nikki. I'm hitting him on the next tell. Bleep, 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 bleep. That phone goes. The, the next tells were funny. You could be in a bank. And if you have that volume on, you'll hear, bleep, bleep, hey, asshole. And people would just turn around and laugh. It was like just a, a walkie-talkie on steroids. If... You guys who are old enough know the next tell. You'll know what I'm talking about. But um, Nikki's not responding. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here now? So as I'm walking through, one of the guys, one of the workers, hey, Dom, can I talk to you? Yeah, what's up? I haven't got paid in about four weeks. So what do you mean you haven't gotten paid? Well, I haven't gotten paid. Nikki's promising me he didn't pay me. All of a sudden, <laughs> one person comes, it all snowballed. I'm like, who didn't get paid four weeks? Who didn't get paid in two weeks? I mean, it was upside down. So now I go in the office. I'm like, let me see. I'm looking at bills, getting calls. The girl who's working in there, is, I'm saying, do we owe money out? She says, yeah. So 
So right away I called the bank where I had my construction company and I was banking with HSBC. At the time there was a young lady who was an assistant manager, uh, Maria. Hey Maria, how are you today? Okay, good, good. Um, how's the account? She says, Dom, it's overdrawn by about 50000 I'm like, are you kidding me? She says, no, no, no. We're just, we covered everything because of the business you give us. I said, all right, Maria, do me a favor from here on forward. Do, do not, do not um, just bounce whatever comes in. So she says, okay. I said, I'll, I'll make sure the money's in the account so my account's even. But please make sure. She says, okay, sweetie. You know, I had a real good relationship with her. So um, she took care of that. So now I'm looking for Nikki. So I grab Greg. Where the fuck is this Nikki? He says, Dom, he's been partying, doing coke. Um, okay, do you have any idea where he is? He's probably home. So now he lived on the seventh floor in Hazel Towers. And we're banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. No answer. No answer. But we know he's there. So I ring the lady's bell next door. I say, excuse me, we're concerned with our friend. She answers, we're concerned with our friend. Do you mind if we jump over the terrace? <laughs> Get over to the terrace. The slide is locked, but the window's open. So we climb outside on the balcony, climb in through the window. Um, I think it was Greg that did that. He um, comes, opens up the door. All of a sudden, Nikki comes out of the bedroom because he has no choice now. And um, what the fuck? And I'm just fuming, fuming. I says, tell you what, clean yourself up. You have an hour. Get your ass to the body shop. I don't care what the fuck you have to do. Take some Valiums, do whatever, calm down, do some coke, wake up. Just get your ass at that body shop. So he comes into the body shop. I'm over there waiting for him. Now I'm fuming. Just rough estimates. We're in the hole maybe $125,000, $130,000. That's rough estimates. So I grab him. He comes in. And we're walking, we're talking. And I said, Nick, show me what we have, where. And he starts talking and he's going, I'm just letting him go. And as we pass one guy, did you pay him? Is he up to date on his pay? Nicky starts, you know, sidestepping, mumbling. All of a sudden, bam, I crack him. He goes into the car. Are you effing kidding me? And I'm going at him. And I'm, I mean, I'm just smacking him lefts, rights, and he's just bouncing into the car, off the floor, getting up. Come on, come with me. Just open hand smacking him, not trying to hurt him. I'm just, I'm going to humiliate him. From one end of the shop to the other. How dare you? I gave you full control of this and you fucking robbed from me. Not only the money I invested, but now this. So I says, what I'm going to do, you're going to work here. You're going to work here because I don't know shit from Shinola about this business. You're going to work here. You're going to manage the guys. And I told all the guys, excuse me, they lined up. I said, guys, I'm going to head over to the bank. I'm going to get some money out. I'm going to give everybody something for the weekend. And within a few weeks, I'll have everybody paid off. They said, all right, thank you, thank you. We, we appreciate it. And I told Nikki, you're going to make $500 a week. That's it. Until this business gets up, you know, gets out of the red. And lo and behold, you know, I went there every morning now. Now I have to show up at this body shop. And I'm there, I'm waiting, I'm paying off vendors. Um, even people I knew were giving parts. They're like, Dom, you know, you owe us ten, fifteen thousand. I said, all right, I'll take care of it. Within about three weeks... We were out of the red. That's how lucrative this business is. And from that point on, you know, Nikki was just running the shop. And what I was doing, I was taking close to about 10000 a week in cash. Plus, I was getting two paychecks out of the business. Um, you know, for my kids' mothers, I just gave them paychecks. So they were on the books making money. But... The business is a cash cow, cash cow. Lo and behold, and then I had Ace Anthony Aiello come in. And this is an earn for you. Stay in here, run it. I'll give you 
he was getting a salary. So he's just sitting there all day. It's like a hangout. But um, I want to see him earn as well. And then I get locked up. Now, the run of the business from when I got it out of the red into the black, maybe about a year, year and a half. So I'm taking that every week. We're making money there. It's doing well. Now I get locked up. As I'm in jail, Vinny's son, Vincent, takes over um, the shop. That's Vinny Basciano, his son, Vinny Jr., takes over the shop. Now all of a sudden, not making money, that I even had words. I sent you know, a nasty message out from visit. This is maybe about five, six months being locked up. Like, what the F's going on? So when the father comes to see me at a co-defendant meeting, he says, my son's upset with you because you accused him of robbing. I'm like, Vinny. And he wrote me, a, he sent like an itemized list telling me he had to throw a hundred, hundred and twenty-five thousand into the shop. I'm like, Vinny, how's that possible? How is that possible that I had, even when I had Ace there, before I got locked up, Ace was there. And we were pulling all this money out. Now all of a sudden your son takes it. And he threw money in. The shop's not doing well. I just don't understand it. But he went on a cruise. Bought his girl a diamond. Got a house. Bought a house. I'm like, this makes no sense to me. And then he's like, well, you know, I, I my hands are tied here. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. But, you know, it's my son. I said, no, I know it's your son. I, I know that. Um, and with that, I asked Dom, quiet Dom, I said, could you do me a favor, please? Because I'm not getting a straight answer. Can you find out what's actually going on with the body shop? My body shop on Westchester Avenue? So he says, absolutely. He had a, a kid, I think the other guy's name was Nick, who was, that's all he did was body shop work. They even Dom said, Dom, if you want, I'll put Nick there. Great guy. He knows the business. He'll really make it produce. I said, Dom, absolutely. It would be a pleasure. We can make money together. But at this point, uh, it, it needs to be salvaged. Maybe three or four weeks, Dom comes off a visit, comes to me, and is like shaking his head. He says, you weren't lying. Your shop is a cash cow. Cash cow. Uh, Nick went there. He was really he said, wow, this is a powerful shop. We can make a ton, a ton of money here. Okay, good, good. Dom shaking his head, but what's wrong? He said, Dom, it's in the hole maybe about a million and a half dollars. I said, you got to be fucking kidding me. He's like, nope. I mean, what they were doing was taking the insurance checks, spending them, taking the vendor money, spending it, having people put down deposits, spending it, not buying the supplies, the materials. He says, it's a mess. They fucking raped you over there. I said, all right, Dom, thank you. So let's just wash it out. But um, that's Cosa Nostra for you. You know, when people get involved and screwing you over. So if everybody likes this story, please hit subscribe. Uh, we have many more stories to come. I had other businesses as well. We had Vintage Realty, a and Tile, um, a lot of different stories to tell about legitimate businesses. But that's sad, you know, at the end of the day. But I was the crazy one. I was the one who, you know, I'm just delusional. I'm this, I'm that. But yet, they milked the shop for close to a million and a half dollars. So please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We have more content coming out. And again, everybody, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com. Order your vodka. It'll be drop shipped to you. Excellent vodka. You'll love the taste. So with that, everybody have a good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Peace out. Much love.